everybody. Um, very, very happy um, to have you here this evening. Sorry, let me just put this on silent. Happy to have you here this evening. And first and foremost, allow me to just introduce myself and then welcome you uh, to Women on Boards and to the session for the day. My name is Catherine Musakali, and I am the chair of the Women on Boards Network. Uh, this network that is going places, this network that is really uh, bringing women together um, to form a formidable force uh, in, in boardrooms. And so my pleasure uh, to have you with us this evening um, and also um, to have you joining the network. I will go through a number of slides. And as I do that, I'll be introducing um, my board members who are on the call, as well as uh, uh, telling you a little bit about those who are not on the call. I will also introduce you to the secretariat, and then uh, we shall take you through the programs of the Women on Boards Network, uh, what you should be expecting in the next few months, how you can plug in, how you can harness the benefits of the network. So thank you for joining us this evening. We hope to take uh, roughly one and a half hours and then we can let you um, have a, a, a restful evening. So Kantai, if you could just uh, share the slides, please. Great. So we can move on to the first uh, slide. So as I said, uh, that is my name. I am a lawyer by profession, uh, but one who has uh, veered off more towards uh, corporate governance and uh, who loves corporate governance to bits. It is my love for corporate governance that actually gave birth to the Women on Boards Network. So very, very happy to have you uh, with us and I'm privileged and honored to lead a very uh, strong team of board members and committee members. And of course, uh, uh, to be your leader as well. A little bit about uh, the Women on Boards uh, Network. Uh, on to the first, next slide, Kantai. Um, this network was founded uh, way back in uh, 20, 30, 2014. Uh, 9th of uh, April 2014. And the aim of the network really is around uh, ensuring that the next uh, crop of board members is more diverse than we are. I am sure you have seen the statistics around women on boards, not just here in Kenya, but across the world. And um, way back in 2014, when we were starting the Women on Boards Network, um, there were very, very few women uh, on boards. In 2017, um, the number of women, the percentage of women on boards in Kenya was about 17%. So you can imagine what it was like in 20, um, 2014. And so we said, um, for our economy to grow, for um, our organizations to perform well, there is need for us to ensure that board members are not just uh, males sitting around the table, but that board members are diverse, uh, not just uh, gender wise, but a few other diversity elements that um, we can engage uh, about. And that is because when you uh, look at studies across the world, um, those studies actually demonstrate that having women on boards actually improves the performance of organizations. And so I want you to just remember that when we talk about making uh, boards more diverse, it has nothing to do with you. It's not about you being a woman. It's about uh, boards performing well because you bring those strengths that are, um, how can I say, in you as a woman. You're not bringing, you're not coming to the board as a woman. You're coming to the board um, uh, because you bring certain strengths that women have, which are critical for the performance on board. So that is our vision there 
to encourage and accelerate uh, diversity on boards uh, by ensuring that there's a pool of board ready women and to provide a networking platform to share experiences, mentoring, coaching, and training. So our membership is made up of women who have already sat on boards, but are not tired of sitting on boards. They're happy to share experiences with the younger women. They're happy to uh, network with the younger women. We also have those of us who have not sat on boards. And so we sit at the feet of some of these women and learn from them and point each other in the right uh, direction. What do we do at uh, Women on Boards Network? Um, of course, the first one is we offer training. And why do we offer training? Because sometimes when you ask uh, people why their boards are not diverse, they say that um, it is because they cannot find uh, women who fit the bill in terms of, um, you know, what do they bring to the table? And so we want to make sure that we provide that training that is needed to be as effective as possible on the board when you're called upon to serve, you are uh, good to go, you understand corporate governance, you understand the uh, workings on boards, and not just that, but you understand how you can harness uh, the skills you have as a woman uh, to be a, a, a very good uh, performing uh, board member. Because we do believe that all the women who are appointed onto boards uh, through the Women on Boards Network are actually our brand ambassadors. And so we value the trainings that we give because that is uh, what keeps on promoting us. And that is what keeps people asking um, whether they can uh, recruit through us, so on and so forth. The second thing we do is, of course, uh, board admission. And so we have people coming to us asking for um, uh, people who can serve on their boards. And let me just share an experience I had today. And I said to Mrs. Wanga, we need to talk about this. I am sure some of you saw us yesterday asking about uh, for CVs uh, for an insurance board. And I was actually, I looked at one CV that came through and I wanted to cry because the CV was not a board CV, but it was a CV um, for somebody looking for a job because it said, I am looking for um, a, a role uh, in an organization, you know, not in so many words, but something to that effect. So we want to make sure that we have um, uh, uh, CVs or profiles that will support board admission to the various boards in this country and also outside of this country. And so some of the training that we offer is also around how do you prepare a good board profile so that when people come looking for board members, that profile can, can, can uh, sell you. The other one is mentorship. We have um, quite a number of mentorship programs that we run under the Women on Boards Network. Uh, one of them, you will hear about it, uh, the Global Women on Boards Program has a mentorship program. We have a mentorship program with our, our brand ambassadors. We have a mentorship program for the juniors. We have a mentorship program, which we are about to roll out uh, for chairs of state corporations. Um, and, and Rose Sang is helping us run with that. What have we achieved so far? Um, when we look, at, uh, look back to um, 2014, we can count roughly about 120 women who have been placed on boards. We can think about over 600 women who have been trained and about 350 women who we have encouraged into senior leadership uh, roles within the different uh, organizations. On to the next slide, please. So we also have an annual conference and I need you to really, really plan for this conference because usually the conference brings us together for about three days and really helps us in terms of just building our capacity as women. Uh, this year, we shall be running our eighth conference because we have one every year. 
and you will be getting details about that a little later. Of course, we have breakfasts and round tables where we talk about uh, a number of issues affecting us as women looking to get into leadership, particularly uh, board leadership, uh, so on and so forth. Um, we did have a recent uh, breakfast when we had um, Esther Koimet as our chief guest, and it went very, very well. Then, of course, we have board talks, uh, which we normally hold in the evenings at least once a month. We aim to have at least one every month. And all these are really aimed at building the capacity of the women um, that we have within the network. They're about sharing of experiences they are about pointing each other in the right direction so that we are board ready at all times. On to the next slide. Right, we have another uh, program which is pretty exciting. For those of you who have uh, uh, children, who have nieces and nephews and cousins and sisters and brothers, uh, we have a junior membership program. And this one is aimed at uh, youth from around the age of 11 years to 24 years. And why is this important? Um, I am sure that some of us sitting in this room uh, look back and say, I wish I knew some of these things when I was younger. I wish somebody talked to me about leadership when I was younger. So that is, uh, why we started the junior uh, membership program, where we start to develop and to mentor these young people into leadership so that they can grow up knowing that it is possible uh, they can get into leadership, they should aim uh, to get into leadership. Now, this program is aimed at both girls and boys, so it's not just uh, girls alone. So if you have brothers, cousins, um, uh, male relatives who are in this age group, uh, please bring them along uh, because we have pretty exciting uh, programs uh, to build their leadership skills as well. Now, I want you to um, just um, talk a little bit about why gender diversity and inclusion matter. And those two words are put there very, very intentionally uh, because it is one thing to aim for gender diversity, but another uh, to feel that um, um, we have gender diversity, but that our skills, our views, our um, thoughts, so on and so forth are included. You can get to sit um, on a board and that board can achieve gender diversity. But if they don't listen to you, if they don't um, uh, include you in discussions, then your sitting on that board is useless. So we like to talk about the two words uh, together uh, because we want, and this is the reason why we keep talking about building the capacity of our members and encouraging them to raise their voices, to be heard, to contribute uh, when they get to boards. So it's very, very important that when you get on that table, you actually lift your hand, you speak, you lift your voice, you, you're heard, you're uh, assertive on the board, not aggressive. Um, that way we get to spread the message that it's not just about gender diversity, but inclusion matters as well. Allow me now to talk a little bit about the founders of Women on Boards Network. First and foremost, the Women on Boards Network is um, a company limited by guarantee. Uh, here in Kenya, you can register a not-for-profit organization um, using about three ways. The first way is by setting up a trust. The second way is by setting up um, an NGO. And the third way is by setting up a company limited by guarantee. The common theme around those three um, uh, methods 
is that you don't take out any profits out of the business or out of the company. And so the Women on Boards Network is a not-for-profit organization, which means, for example, when we run our programs, uh, any funds that are made by Women on Boards Network are plowed back into um, the, the, the of the company and they're not taken out at all uh, by any of the founders. So let me now talk about the founders. On to the next slide, can't I? So um, the founders are those, uh, um, the ones you can see on the screen, um, starting with uh, CS Rose Lumumba. I don't know whether, can't I, whether Rose is on the call now? Has she joined? No, she hasn't. Okay, so let me uh, say a few words about Rose. Rose is a, um, a lawyer by profession, a governance uh, expert as well, currently working for the IFC. She's one of our founders at Women on Boards Network. We also have uh, FCS and Kirote Moria, uh, a lawyer um, and also a governance uh, specialist, currently working for Old Mutual. And then we have Calvin Nyachoti. Uh, we like to say he's the only man uh, until Reverend Jenga came along. We used to say he's the only man who carries along, proudly carries along a pink card. Now uh, he has been joined by Reverend Jenga. We are very, very happy to say that our board is also diverse. And then of course there is myself. On to the next slide, please. So um, allow me to talk about, um, can't I, do we have another slide for the board members before we talk about the brand ambassadors? Right, let me talk about our, um, the rest of the board first. So over and above the founders of Women on Boards Network, our board is made up of seven of us. So the four founders, and uh, this gentleman and two ladies um, that, whose pictures you can see on the slide, who also happen to chair the committees of Women on Boards Network. And since two of them are, are, are in the room, I want them to uh, first and foremost uh, say hello to you, welcome you to the network and tell you a little bit ab about themselves. So let me start with Reverend Jenga. Boy child. <laughs> boy child? Yes, boy child is right here. And thank you very <laughs> much, Catherine. Um, uh, thank you for uh, the occasion and also for inviting us to be part of welcoming the people who are joining Women's on Boards Network. I am a priest in the Anglican Church um, and also a professional mediator and also a consultant in matters corporate governance. I serve the women on board. To... Sorry. Uh, did you say something, Catherine? Sorry, Reverend, you seem to have disappeared. Oh, have I? Um, can I be heard now? Can you hear me, Catherine? Yes, we can. Uh, great. I was saying it's my greatest pleasure to welcome uh, all those who are joining this uh, very precious uh, organization um, that tries to encourage leadership, um, um, inclusivity, and diversity in leadership. I am a firm believer that leadership is the most important ingredient in any human endeavor and it does not discriminate. <clears throat> Should you find something that is working, if you cut it right through, you'll find a leader and it really doesn't matter which gender. Someone who knows what ought to be done and, 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 is, and, and is doing it and doing it well. I chair the policy and advocacy committee and I will welcome you to come and join with us in that committee at the appropriate time and what we do in that committee is to engage 
key stakeholders and, and, and the public at large to raise awareness about this organization, what the objectives are and our goals. And uh, Catherine has talked a lot about our goals and our objectives. That committee is also mandated to advance strategic framework. We raise uh, advance the strategic framework by promoting, by monitoring and providing advice about programs and policies that address issues of gender discrimination. We want everyone in uh, when we talk about uh, the appointments uh, to the board. So that, that's what we do. I'm glad as you, I'm, I'm, I'm sure as you uh, stay longer in this organization, you will learn more and more about what we do. Thank eh? you. Over to you, Catherine. Thank you very much, uh, Reverend. Um, sorry, somebody needs to mute. Thank you very much, Reverend. May I invite Judith to introduce herself and tell us a little bit about what her committee does. Uh, thank you, Catherine, and uh, thank you, members, and uh, and and of course, uh, members of the board who are who are present. So, uh, my name is Judith Sidio Diambo, and um, I am a, a corporate communications uh, specialist and I, I and, and PR uh, practitioner. And so, I'm happy that uh, this evening we have been able to have the session with you as we meet with the team members. So, I do head. I think you've lost Judith. Yes, we did. <clears throat> ah. Maybe Reverend, you can continue introducing Judy. I'm not sure I know what to say. I, I think we will let her come back and introduce herself. Perhaps, Catherine, you can say a little more about Judith. Yeah, Judith, I think, has dropped off. I also dropped off a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Judith, do let me know when you come back. Is Faith in the room? Can't I? Is Faith in the room? Mrs. No, Wanda? she hasn't joined yet. Okay. Um, yes. Is there any other board member who has uh, joined? Sorry, sorry. From Finance Committee, yes, Rose Maruti is present. Okay, great. So allow me to just uh, invite the committee members who are on the line as well to... Uh, uh, Tell us who they are and which committee they serve in. So Rose, um, maybe we can start with you. Okay, thank you very much. Good evening. My name is Rose Maruti. I serve in the partnerships, the finance administration and partnerships committee as a board member. Is that thank enough you. or do I need also to yes. introduce what I do? Yes, please tell us something about what you do. <laughs> okay, uh, I am currently the head of human resources and administration at Mastermind Tobacco, Kenya Limited, and I am also in some board positions. Maybe I'll talk about that during my session. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Um, can I do we have any other committee member? Oh. 
Yes, Bahati Murara for membership. And oh program. yes, Bahati, I can see you. Thank you, Bahati. Hi, Bahati. All right. Um, I am sure, Evelyn. Okay, great. Yes. Let's just go on and then you, you want to introduce yourself? Okay. Yeah, so my name is Evelyn Agala, a member of uh, Women on Board and a HR professional. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, great. Um, on to the next slide. Can I as we wait for Judith to come back? Right, um, allow me to introduce um, three very special ladies. These are the ladies who have been communicating with you, uh, whose posts you see almost on a daily basis, who serve the network so tirelessly. Sometimes you um, may be forgiven to think that we have more than three people at the secretariat. We actually just have three people. They have recently been joined by one intern and I would like now to invite them to introduce themselves and um, to say what they do at the secretariat, starting with uh, Mrs. Wanga. And as the secretariat um, introduces themselves, just take it from me that the board is uh, very, very grateful for all the work you do. Mrs. Wanga, please. Thank you, Catherine. Uh, good evening, ladies. Uh, my joy usually is when I get new members joining Women on Boards Network. Uh, I'm very passionate about Women on Boards Network. Uh, my background is I'm a retired banker, but I'm not tired to serve the Women on Boards. And uh, my joy increases when you sign up for those training that Catherine is talking about. Actually, right now, we are in a dilemma because of the CVs that we have. We, we have clients, but we don't have very, very impressive CVs. So when you join the trainings that we have, it is my joy to receive the good CVs and to present to our clients ladies that can serve on boards. So Karibu Sana, thank you. Thank you very, very much, Mrs. Wanga. Uh, that is our C CEO there. Our company secretary is Ms. Hannah Mwangi, who is also running a lot of the programs. Is Hannah on the call? No, she's not, unfortunately. Okay, so Hannah is running a lot of the programs. I'm sure you see her communication um, uh, almost uh, daily. Uh, we are very grateful to Hannah. Um, she also acts or doubles up as our company secretary. And then last but not least, we have uh, Nasarian Kantai. Kantai, over to you. Thank you, Ms. Catherine. My name is Nasarian Kantai. I'm in charge of communication and uh, other programs, including the junior membership. It's good to have you on board. Thank you. Thank you very, very much, Kantai. And I can see a few more uh, committee members who I didn't introduce, including Rose Sang. Rose, please uh, introduce yourself and tell us which committee you serve on. You have um, uh, been doing a lot of work for us, facilitating our sessions. We are forever grateful to you, Rose. Over to you. Thank you very much, Catherine, and uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Rose Sang. I do serve on the membership committee. Um, and, you know, I MC as well and moderate a lot of the sessions and run um, alongside the members of Secretariat, the Women on Boards Ambassador Program. So thank you very much. Please feel free to plug in. There's lots to do. And it's an exciting place to be. Asante Sana, Catherine. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Rose. Evelyn, who introduced herself, is a member of the membership uh, committee. 
and I can see a question posed to me about the junior membership fee. It, you will not believe it, but it is, I think, 1,000 shillings. Mrs. Wanga, can you confirm that? Yeah, registration is 2,000 shillings, and then uh, every year you renew with 1,000. Thank you very much. So, Rosalind, that is the answer to, to the question. Right. Uh, can, I, can I now hand over to Judith to take us through our programs? Yes, please. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, so as I said, I chair the Membership and Programs Committee. And so basically the principal uh, purpose of this committee is to ensure that uh, membership and professional standards are maintained and, uh, and, uh, and also applied to the required uh, levels for members. We also ensure that there's development of uh, membership at large, including full and associates. And as of today, I think we have 708 members uh, under our umbrella. Also is to ensure timely and strategic communication and, and education of members and potential members. And what you are going through today is part of it as orientation uh, that you get to understand uh, what the programs are all about. What does WOBN mean? How can you plug in? And which are the focus areas, uh, even as we plan ahead? And also we promote membership growth and retention and also review our membership uh, recruitment drives. So we do have programs that we run throughout the year. And so one of the programs that we do is the Global Women on Boards program, uh, which, which uh, basically looks at how boardroom trends, corporate governance, risk finance, board dynamics are done. And it's normally an eight month modular program and it's normally hosted, of course, it's hosted in East Africa, and normally we get uh, uh, facilitators from Malaysia who help us to run this program. And uh, this program basically enables us to have a better overview of board governance, leadership, and dynamics in a more global environment because we're able to share best practice across. And we know best practice is important uh, as members to know what is happening elsewhere and what can we borrow and learn from, from what others are doing and also what can we share even from what we're already doing well here. So it's also a very interactive uh, program. Then we have, of course, the corporate governance training crash program. So this is our localized uh, content program. Uh, so far, we have been running it on, um, uh, we've been running it online. Uh, initially, of course, we used to have a physical attendance. So we have been doing it online. And basically, it looks at um, our board leadership and board uh, simulation sessions and also ensures that uh, all members are able to learn on corporate governance and what is expected of you uh, when you, you, are, you take up a board position, either in a private sector, uh, in, in, in a company, uh, or also in a, in a government position. So it gives you the whole concept of, of serving in boards in those various environments. What do you look out for? Uh, and also what are best practice? Uh, what are the kind of questions that, sh that you should ask? Uh, how do you present yourselves? How do you make sure that you can be able to, uh, to, to, uh, to, to add value uh, to that board when you sit there? And so this corporate governance training crash program then answers that question. Uh, let's move. Uh, then we have board profiling and personal positioning workshop. Uh, this one, um, uh, Catherine, I think, talked about it earlier. How do we make sure that uh, you are able to profile yourself? Uh, basically, a board position when you, are, when you apply for it is different from the way you apply for a job. And therefore, uh, in this forum, you learn about how are you able uh, to apply and make these different applications for the different boards. How do you present yourself? How do you position yourself? How do you brand uh, what you're going to write in your documents? All this as part of ensuring that uh, you, you, you improve on your competencies. So board profi profiling and personal positioning workshop. Also, it is run also with a facilitator from Malaysia. Uh, and so they help us to be able to, to, to strategically position ourselves for board, uh, meaning both global and, and local boards so that then you, you can be able to be more competent, especially for those who are looking at serving even in global boards beyond, uh, beyond the borders of Kenya. 
Uh, then we have the WOBN Group Board Mentorship Program. So this program basically is designed for the next generation female directors with the opportunity to develop their unique value uh, to boards. And what it does is that uh, it helps us to, to work with a board member. Uh, and that's part of the people who are serving on boards. It's part of them also giving back, uh, working with you on that journey, mentoring you, holding your hand, uh, so that once you get that opportunity, uh, you are able to know what is expected of you. So basically, this is more uh, of 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 a, of, a, of the cla not classroom, but this is more of the practicality part of it. Uh, what happens when you serve in the board, and this person is able to mentor you and work with you in that journey, so that uh, you can be able then to uh, to understand the dynamics of serving in a board. And of course, we have also the WOBN Ambassadors Board Mentorship Program. So this is normally a six months a free, free board program, which is designed again to also tap into existing knowledge, skills and experiences of our brand ambassadors. As uh, Catherine had talked earlier, we have brand amb ambassadors uh, and our WOBN, and therefore uh, you are able to tap into them to be able to advance yourself, seek guidance. Uh, so actually they are there to be able to, 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 to sell our CVs, uh, to see how they can promote WOBN. And also if you need to seek guidance, then they can be able also to provide that guidance uh, in terms of how you can improve, how you can serve in your career, as well as also how do you achieve uh, your board objectives and goals. And also we have the awards uh, which, uh, which were launched uh, in 2021. And then we have the WOBN awards and these awards basically celebrate gender parity, recognizes excellence in board service and also ensures that we honor individuals and companies that have made significant improvements towards gender diversity and inclusion. Normally it's in various categories as mentioned. We have Women Board Director of the Year, Women Chess Chairperson of the Year, and so forth and so forth as you read. Uh, so these awards normally uh, happen during our annual conference. So even as you prepare for the annual conference, it is normally during that time that we also host the, the awards. So they normally kick off around August and I'm sure there'll be more communication about it as we, as we, as we get along uh, in the course of the year. For Coteries, I will hand over to... It's uh, Rose Maruti, she's present. Okay. okay, Rose, over to you. Thank you. Come on, allow me to just uh, uh, touch on uh, Coteries and then uh, Rose, if you do come on the call, please just alert me that you're here. Now, um, what are coteries? Um, first and foremost, we felt that um, one could join the network. And then because it's such a huge network, you can easily get lost uh, in there and get forgotten. But each and every one of us is important. And each and every one of us has dreams, has aspirations, has goals, which are very, very important. And we at Women on Boards are interested in making sure that as much as we can, we actually help each of us to achieve our goals. So the board then decided to uh, put in place a program uh, that focuses on smaller groups of uh, members. So those are the coteries. Um, when you join the network, you can be put in a coterie that is a small group uh, of a maximum of eight of you. Um, one of you is asked to chair or you can check, take the chairmanship in, in uh, terms. And the role of the coterie is really around um, asking each of the members to state what their goals are and for the rest of the members to hold you accountable to the achievement of those goals. The other role of the members is to point you in the right direction. So I might go to my coterie and say, this year I want to sign on for my PhD. And the role of my coterie therefore is to, you know, keep pushing me until I actually sign on to uh, uh, my PhD. And then of course, account to them as I go along. So it serves that purpose to help you 
push you towards your goals, point you in the right direction, open doors for you. And I think Rose, now you have joined and so you can speak about Coteries. I was just filling in the yes, gap for you. I have joined. Okay, thank you very much. Sorry, the, I just my network just dropped and I was struggling to join back. All right, so um, as mentioned earlier, my name is Rose Maruti uh, and I am a member of Women on Boards. So one of the roles of the Coterie, basically the Coterie is a, is a group of uh, seven to 10 ladies. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes, oh, great. Seven to 10 ladies who are put to one another through the journey of, of uh, being and the journey of getting into board positions. So it's a very good opportunity for us to be in a smaller segment, apart from the larger women on, on boards group, we are a smaller segment. So you're able to share, you're able to interact closely, uh, you're able to bounce things off each other so that you're learning from each other, getting the opportunity to, or to look to people who have more sitting in boards as directors. So I believe coteries are very, are very important uh, part of the Women on Boards Network, and they have really helped many ladies to even simple things as how do you present yourself at a board level. There are different boards which you have to look in different ways. So those sessions also help you build your confidence as an individual about how do you present and put participate so there's being inclusive in the board uh, session so all those are learning opportunities for us and uh, so I, I I like the coterie the concept of the coterie and it, it really adds a lot of value so I encourage you look forward to joining one uh, initially the women on board would put you into a coterie but sometimes then once you've joined you may realize either the dynamics are are not working or you feel like maybe you're as they say the best person in the group and so you're not challenged so you want a more challenging team you'd always request through the women on boards network and you'll be able to be assigned to another group that ensures that you continue to learn you continue to grow so that has been my experience with the coteries and uh, yeah welcome welcome on board to the women on boards network thank you very much Unless uh, you have any questions for me, I can leave it there. Thank you very much, uh, Rose. So as you can uh, uh, hear from Rose, the coterie is really a challenging place to be, but it is a good place to be uh, because you're, you're up close and candid with your peers, up close and candid with yourself, and you're pushed to limits that uh, sometimes you think you're not uh, capable of. Some of the coteries, um, some of the coteries that we have had within the network uh, have done amazing stuff. Um, one coterie started um, a social program where on an annual basis, they go visit children's homes, so on and so forth. Another coterie actually started a very um, a strong merry-go-round um, so there are a few other benefits that are not completely related to women on boards, but when women come together, great things happen. So we, we, we encourage you to do whatever it is to grow each other, whether it is um, um, uh, economically or uh, just building your profile, building your confidence, so on and so forth. Uh, please do whatever you can. Um, to get there. Thank you very much. Right. Um, Alice, <laughs> I can see you're on the call. May I invite you to um, introduce yourself and to tell us a little bit about what you do and how you can support upcoming um, members of the network as well as upcoming board members, Alice. Uh, thank you, Catherine. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I was, uh, should I say ambushed, but I was trained by Women on Boards Network to be always ready to take up any challenges. My name is Alice O'War. Uh, 
I'm a retired public servant, currently serving on several uh, boards. Um, perhaps I could, <laughs> I could just highlight um, a short story of where I was before Women on Boards and where I am now. I don't know if that's okay, Catherine. That is absolutely fine, Alice. Thank you. Okay, so probably I could share with the, the new members uh, what my desires were before I retired. Just as I was planning to retire, I mean, I was um, uh, at the tail end of my career as a public servant. I had four desires uh, on my bucket list, some kind of a to-do list uh, once I retired. One was to see the world. The next was to serve on one board. Remember, just one board. Uh, to me, that was going to be enough. And to be an IMF consultant, um, because that was in line with my profession then. And the fourth one was to take it easy as a retiree. But in 2016, five things happened. One, I retired from the public service. Two, I immediately went on a two weeks cruise as part of seeing the world. Three, I was appointed as board chair of Kenya Institute of Management Governing Council. And at that point I was satisfied. And then I became an IMF external expert. And uh, great things happened. I joined Women on Boards Network, a move that completely changed many things in my life. Uh, I attended several inspiring and life transforming board talks. I attended annual conferences, workshops, breakfast and roundtable forums. And this you know, led to so many things that happened in my life. One, uh, there were so many lessons that I picked from inspirational speakers, so many nuggets that I picked, practical tips on how to be effective on a board. I picked a lot of lessons on great leadership. Uh, how to make an impact in any area of service that I needed to, uh, to be in, how to have presence, uh, how to be relevant, and how to have emotional intelligence. I mean, the list could go on and on. I picked so many things. Um, and I took up these lessons and actually put them into practice. Right now, when I look back uh, to where I started, I know I have become a better board member in terms of preparation of uh, preparation for board meetings, in terms of participating better. Uh, through Women on Boards Network, um, I got an opportunity. Maybe at this point I should say we got an opportunity because we were two ladies who are members of Women on Boards Network. Uh, through uh, the network, we were given an opportunity to be interviewed for board a board position. And even though that did not work out, the chair of that interview panel, I think felt that we had something to offer and arranged for another interview with a different company, uh, which he was also chairing. And we actually became uh, uh, board members. And this was also because of his passion to promote gender inclusivity, but, uh, gender diversity. So right now, uh, I mean, because of Women on Boards Network, I joined a board that I'd never even envisaged that I could. Uh, and from there on, uh, so many board doors have been opened for me. Uh, since my CV and experience had become richer, you just had Catherine talking about, uh, and Agnes talking about CVs. I, and now I get headhunted for additional board positions. Remember, I, I mentioned I was only looking forward to having um, to be serving on one board. I currently serve on six boards. Uh, I serve on one uh, tribunal, um, and I serve. I, I chair four committees of different boards. Um, I, I serve. I mean, I chair one of the six boards, and uh, the greatest thing that happened in women on boards. A network was that I was assigned to a coterie of amazing ladies who are my accountability partners. We encourage and push one another to achieve our goals and excel in whatever we are doing. We open doors um, and point out opportunities for one another. 
the icing on the cake is that we are planning to go on a cruise together. Uh, we were supposed to have gone on a cruise uh, two years. Yeah, so we were supposed to have gone on a cruise as a coterie. You can imagine, I mean, for us, that was going to be the greatest thing. And it wouldn't have happened if uh, we'd never joined Women on Boards Network. I've made great friends through the network. I've joined uh, Women on Boards Enter Entrepreneurs Forum, which if you asked me, I can summarize as you need it, you get it. It's an extremely resourceful network. So uh, Catherine, I probably would just uh, wish to uh, welcome uh, to this great network, the ladies who have just recently joined. Please join our coterie, attend Women on Boards uh, forum uh, networks, I mean forums and events, spruce up your CV. There are experts within uh, Women on Boards network who can help you spruce up your CV network widely and be visible and also offer to serve on a board on a charity basis. Currently, I chair a board on a charity basis and it really opens up doors for you and gives you experience. I think what, that's what I would say for now. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Alice. Um, Kantai, I don't know whether any of these members on the screen are also in the room. Yes, they are. Okay. Um, you want them to uh, speak? Yes, please. Okay. You go ahead. Uh, Doreen, maybe we can. Doreen, are you there? Um, yes, yes. Um, there, can I? Yes, please I. Proceed. I can proceed. Yes, please. Ah, thank you. Good, good evening, members. Uh, very excited to be here this evening. Um, I, I just want to talk briefly about um, my experience after joining our uh, women on board. Um, my, my, the opportunity for me to get to know the Women on Board Network was in 2018. When I met Catherine in Mombasa during a manager's conference that had been organized by Kenya Institute of Management. And you know, this warm, knowledgeable lady, and she spoke so passionately about women in leadership. And I can only say, Catherine, the passion was contagious. I would not basically have avoided an infection. And so um, for me, um, I started following up and I managed to join in 2019. And since then, it has been heaps and heaps of learning that is through the various forums, the board talks, the corporate governance training um, that for me, I will say it was God sent. I just joined um, an, an organization and in this case, a parastato at senior management position. And uh, part of the work was basically to interact with the board, the board papers. I had not done that before. And I will say for sure, uh, the women on boards has really come through for me. It has helped me understand the boards better, how they work, what are the expectations, listening to Catherine talk about Mongozo. It's been eye opener. Uh, the mentorship program that I just completed, just waiting to graduate, the talks, the presenters, you know, top notch professionals, and mm -hmm. getting to listen to great minds, Catherine herself the likes of Martin Otieno, Dr. Kipketich. I mean, they are great brains, great teachers. It has been quite uh, an amount of learning. And uh, what I can say is that uh, it's been very fruitful and rewarding, the interactions, the networks, and uh, of course, not failing to mention the Entrepreneurs Forum, you know, where you get your issues sorted out at your fingertips. Today, I saw someone ask, Do, does anybody know anyone traveling from the UK? And I'm like, wow, this is the right place to be because you get all your issues sorted out in one, in one place. And uh, for sure, I, I can say that uh, if I have seen far, it is because I have stood on the shoulders of the Women on Boards Network. 
And so for the new members who are joining the, the women on boards, I can confidently confirm that you're coming to a professional and great organization. Best decision in 2022, if you're looking at growing your leadership skills. And therefore, I will tell you uh, for sure, expect growth, expect a lot of uh, sharpening, shaping, expect change in the things that you know about leadership. Um, expect to be broken. You know, the foundations of what you think you know about leadership, they will surely be shaken. Expect to be melted through a lot of unlearning because I think uh, human beings we fail sometimes in the area of unlearning that which we know. Expect to be molded, of course, through the great learning and expect to be filled with skills, knowledge and inspiration for service to institutions. And these I would be looking at it not only nationally, but also regionally and globally. And what I will tell you is expect the affirmation that yes, you are woman and you are fully endowed and capable of doing and achieving great exploits in those boardrooms and sea suits in the exact form that God created you. Many times as women, we think because of the way we are created, we are lesser, we are not less. In that form, the way God has created you as a woman, you will achieve a lot through this forum. Thank you so much. Thanks, Kantai. Thank you, Doreen. Um, maybe we can proceed to our junior members. Husna, are you present? Yes, Kantai. Yes, please proceed. Uh, good evening, all. Um, thank you for granting me this opportunity to um, give experience as a junior member of the network. And um, I remember my interest in joining a community that was uh, passionate about leadership and governance was stemmed when I was when I finished reading the book uh, Lean In by um, Cheryl Sandberg, who is the current CEO of the Metaverse, what is currently uh, formerly known as uh, Facebook, and she was so passionate about leadership. And I remember thinking I needed a community, and it particularly it's, it needed to be in Kenya because there's a tendency for us young women to look up to the women in the West, uh, the likes of the First Lady Michelle Obama, the Chief Justice, uh, rather the Justice Kentaji Browns and uh, Vice President Kamala Harris. And we forget that within our borders, within Kenya, there's so many phenomenal women and we can learn so much from them. And so I, sat, uh, I went to Google, searched on governance and networks, I did not find anything. And luckily when I was on LinkedIn, I scrolled and the, web, uh, the network came through to my uh, page and I immediately applied, registered, and it's only been about uh, 10 months of registration since last, uh, last year of October. And I remember I, was, I did not participate as much during the last year, but when this new year began, I purposed to uh, prioritize attending the sessions because I realized there's so much um, wisdom, uh, understanding, and so much skill within our women uh, leadership. And, uh, and that was something that I needed to pay attention to. And uh, coincidentally, the sessions happen when I have my master's classes, which sometimes means having to be both in class and do, attend the session at the same time. And I remember this one time my brother asked me, do I really have to be on both uh, platforms at the same time? And I remember ask, uh, telling him that, yes, I did, because uh, there's so much I could learn from the team, from the members, from our ambassadors. And that is exactly what I am doing. And it's been a great um, uh, 10 months so far. I've been, uh, have learned so much, there's so much empowerment. And there's a quote that says, or rather a saying that says, women are their worst enemies. But in this platform, I've realized that when you're surrounded by the right women, they're really the best and, and the most, uh, where you can, uh, draw your strength from and learn from because it's a community that feels like home. I felt like in case I ever needed anything in my future endeavors as a board member, I can always reach out to each and every one of us for some help. And the community that is built within the network is um, we all draw and learn from experiences and are there during uh, the good times, achievement to celebrate each other when anyone is going through uh, any board member or rather board issues, we are there to 
uh, offer help. And that's the beauty of being in this network. So to the new members, I hope you prioritize the sessions, purpose to attend, and um, I hope you enjoy your stay as much as I'm enjoying mine. Thank you. Thank you, Husna. Thank you very much. Um, Karen, you can proceed. Thank you very much, Kantai. Um, thank you so much for the opportunity yet again. I, I, was just, I was just asking Kantai, so what am I supposed to say after Doreen, Alice, and Husna have shared such powerful statements? But I, I think I'll just add one thing. So I have been on Women on Boards for the last probably one and a half years. It has been such an intense experience. And I say intense because if you're very intentional about it, then you will attend the trainings. You will attend the group mentoring sessions. You will immerse yourself in each and every opportunity that presents itself, which eventually I can assure you will prove quite giving. So I'll start with my sep September. I did the September Corporate Governance Training, which was quite interesting. So of this platform, you all have a similar goal eventually to serve and basically to know more corporate governance. So for the junior member, it's all about capacity building. We've been able to get um, project training, which I think about a week, you get to have the board members and other leaders coming on board to lecture you on certain aspects. So there are certain aspects of, for example, the Chinese Act, the Mongol Code, they will highlight for you, very key and instrumental when you start serving on a board. Beyond that, you also get within all the spaces to immerse yourself in a live um, sort of experience it first and before you get to serve on a board, board capacity if you haven't or if you're not serving at the moment. So for me, as a young person and as a young lady, it helped me find, make my capacity in that sense, and also think about a few years from now, where would I want would be my expectations when I get there. As Husna has said, it also has given us a platform to have role models, especially with the ambassadorial program. For the longest time, I wanted to meet uh, Patricia Ithau. This is a platform that has given me the space to do that, which is quite rare. And it's one of those things where you're taught not to change yourself, but you're taught to use your capabilities as a person, not as a woman or anything, but as a person and use it to the best of your advantage. Other than that, I have made so many friends. Um, people can testify that they've done so much business here and I've gotten to really improve my public speaking skills by moderating a session during the conference last year. And as a person, I have grown holistically. So as you journey on this journey, I can assure you Every single person has a positive experience about being a member. So please come on board, bring your children on board, bring your nieces, nephews on board and enjoy it to the fullest of capacity. But most importantly, please be deliberate and purposeful because with that, that is the only way you can. Great, there you are. No, no, no I'd finish, I'd finish. Thank you so much. And to our queen mother, thank you for always supporting and working with us and bullying us to do certain things that have Essentially, they make you sweat, but they grow you most importantly. So thank you very much. I call her the queen thank mother you. because she is the queen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. My role is to pull you, push you, do whatever I can um, to put you in the spotlight. And that I will definitely do. I like um, one thing that uh, Karen has said, be deliberate and intentional about the programs we run. We run very many programs, and unless you're intentional about them, you'll just be part of the network. But if you uh, purpose to actually attend and to get value out of them, then you actually will do that. Um, allow me just a few minutes to talk about our brand ambassadors, and then we shall talk about our upcoming events, and then we call it an evening. So we have um, brand ambassadors. Um, how did this program come to be? Um, we sat back and we said, alone, we will take a hundred years to get to some networks. But there are leading lights within uh, this country who can get us into their networks um, if we make them part of us. So we approached uh, these ladies and gentlemen you see on the screen and we asked them, 
would you mind being our brand ambassadors? Because we know that you believe in the cause of women on boards. We know um, in addition to that, that you really want to support women into leadership. But thirdly, we know that you have networks that probably we don't have. We know that you um, are always in places where women are required as board members. Can you please be those people who speak for us uh, out there? And so they, they graciously said, yes, we will. Very enthusiastically said, yes, we will. And so our brand ambassadors are Rita Kavashe, who is the managing director of Isuzu East Africa, current board chair of BAT um, Kenya, uh, in addition to a number of other boards. We have uh, Flora Mutahi, who is uh, she of the Melvin's Tea, you know? So those of you, when we say MASH International, some of you may not uh, re uh, recognize it, but that's Melvin's Tea. I hope you take her tea. Uh, so Flora is our brand ambassador. She is also the current chair of KEPSA. Um, uh, so Flora, very, very happy to have her on board as our brand ambassador. And then of course, Patricia Ithau, um, who uh, was previously uh, the regional director of Stanford Seed, but she has recently taken on the role uh, at WPP uh, as the CEO. Uh, she too is our brand ambassador. And then two gentlemen who are so deeply passionate about women on boards, uh, John Gumi and Dr. Julia Skipnetich. Amazing gentlemen, um, when they speak uh, for women, you would think they are women. Actually, I think deep down they are women because they, they believe in this cause like I don't know what. I mean, uh, John Gumi, who has been very instrumental in getting a number of our members appointed onto state corporation boards, Dr. Kipnge Teach, who is always asking us for CVs to get women appointed um, to private sector boards. And so we are really, really grateful to our brand ambassadors who speak for us uh, when we are not in the room, who connect us in the right, um, within the right networks and who push us when we need to be pushed. You should see these people celebrating the appointments that we have uh, at Women on Boards. So forever grateful for them. And one of the programs that was mentioned was the ambassador's um, um, mentorship. Uh, this is a six month uh, program where you go through the hands of these uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, they run sessions for you about how you can be a good board member, how you can be the best you, uh, the best brand of you. Um, and so really, really honored to have um, these ladies and gentlemen as our brand ambassadors. Can't I over to you? Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Kati. Uh, maybe I can hand over to Judith so that she can finish. Okay, so we'll go through the upcoming events that you're going to be having. Uh, so we have Global Women on Boards program, which goes for a duration of six months. Applications will be closing next month in May, uh, May 25th. Uh, so I think there have been some uh, um, communication on this earlier. So for more, please get in touch with the sec secretariat so that you get further details for those who want to engage in this program. Let's move. Maybe Judith, just to say a few words about uh, this particular one, which is uh, uh, one of our flagship uh, programs. This is a program that we run jointly with Lead Women of Malaysia. But this year we have a third uh, partner who we consider as our knowledge uh, partner. Uh, that is Columbia Business, uh, Columbia Global Centers, which is part of Columbia University. And so those are the three partners running this program. Initially, we used to run it face to face uh, between Kenya and Malaysia. So um, one week in Kenya, one week in Malaysia. But because of COVID, we have taken this program online. This year, the exciting thing about this program this year is that um, the, the, the dons at uh, Columbia University have come on board and offered us um, a graduation within their premises in Paris. So those of you who will come on board, 
will be graduating in Paris. And um, as part of the fee for this program, uh, you will get uh, accommodation in Paris, although you need to pay for your own um, uh, flight uh, to and from Paris. Thank you. Over to you, Judy. Thank you. That's uh, very exciting, Catherine. Uh, so let's move to the next one. Yes, uh, so we have the Corporate Governance Training Crash Program, which I also talked about earlier. Uh, normally, we have uh, three cohorts which have been scheduled for this year. So next month, 9th to 13th, uh, we are going to have another session. And then after 9th, September, uh, so what we can do is to make sure that we register for the one that, that, that is applicable for us. So probably if you're busy in May, uh, you can opt to register for the one for September. So registration is ongoing for May. Uh, so if you're interested, uh, kindly uh, join. And of course, uh, when you look at the, the cost, it, for members is 30,000 and for non-members is 35,000. So the secretariat, of course, can be able to share with you uh, the details. So this will be a virtual, uh, virtual training. Uh, so virtual training for the, for, for the uh, four days. And so uh, uh, it's, it's a very useful program. Personally, I've done it, so I know it's, it's, it's quite good and it opens up your eyes uh, to what are the board dynamics and the politics uh, and, and what you should take note of uh, so that you just don't go there blindly, uh, but you go there knowing uh, what are the expectations and, and, and what you need to do. So it, it is also a very good program. Uh, next slide. Of course, then we have junior membership. As you said, we also want to create a pipeline of the next generation. So again, we have a junior membership program through a webinar. And so on 22nd of April, that is this week on Friday, 6.30 to 7.30, we have our boys and girls 13 years and, uh, 13 years and above who will be having uh, their webinar on awakening the giant within. And uh, we are going to have a, a speaker who will be taking them through some exciting speakers. I'm trying to read their Winnie names. Winnie Jenga is the, is the speaker. Oh, Winnie Jenga. So Winnie Jenga will be their speaker and our moderator is Cicely. It will be Cicely. Okay, so let's, uh, for those of us, I know some of us have our kids at home of this age, 13 and above, uh, uh, just make them, uh, uh, just reach out to them so that they can join and listen. Uh, sometimes it's not so much to, to, to be a member, but for them to listen and see if there are things that they're going to learn out of, the, of it. And especially most of them who have leadership skills, which are, are showing, uh, will actually appreciate uh, the session. Then, of course, uh, we have the we, we are WOBN Ambassadors Board Mentorship Program graduation. This will be communicated later. Then we have board talk series. Uh, these ones are normally monthly. So the next one will be on 12th May uh, from 6.30 p.m. to 8.30. And then we have the WOBN board mentoring program for aspiring directors, which will be on 29th June to 16th November. This is also done in phases and in modules. Um, I don't know whether Catherine, you want to elaborate more on this? Um, uh, yes, the, the, the registration for this, we'll soon announce the registration for this. This is uh, run for us by a lady, uh, Dr. Marcella Lucas, who is uh, based out of Malaysia. It is um, the mentorship, uh, you're, you're divided into very tiny groups and you're mentored by um, a selected mentor. And uh, the previous cohort had amazing uh, uh, time with their mentors. Some of them went out, some of them uh, uh, had sessions with their mentors at their homes. Uh, so really more, much more personalized uh, mentoring um, than the ambassador's program because the ambassador's program has uh, a bigger number of participants, but this one has a very small number uh, because it's a paid up program. Thank you. Okay, and then we have board profiling and personal positioning workshop. Uh, so again, these ones, we have three cohorts. So we have 7th to 12th July, uh, cohort one, and then we have 27th October and, and, and 1st uh, November. So we have 7th and 12th July, uh, 27th October and, and 1st November.
Uh, so let's uh, plan for this. Uh, we know how important it is to make sure that uh, we arrange our CVs in a much better way. Uh, so take advantage of that so that you can be able to get to to get the proper skills on how how to do a proper CV and how to present yourself and brand yourself for for board positions. So welcome on board and uh, unless there are questions, uh, I will then now hand over to Catherine, but we are so excited that uh, you have joined. And for those who are still thinking, uh, please make up your mind, uh, you are at the right place. And uh, we, we have so many ladies here will hold your hand uh, so that you can journey along as, as you find your way uh, through the, the boardrooms. So over to you, Catherine. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Judith. So Judith, as you heard, is the chair of uh, the membership committee. Um, so really, really grateful to you, Judith, uh, for all the work that you do. And uh, ladies, we are here for you. Um, anything that uh, uh, perhaps you have a question, just reach out to us either to Mrs. Wanga or Hannah or Kantai, whatever it is, we will always point you in the right direction. I have had uh, members who are going for interviews coming to me and saying, Catherine, uh, I have this interview tomorrow. I'm not confident, what can I do? And uh, believe you me, members of the network have stepped up and members of the network have helped, including um, when um, there were interviews um, for commissioners for IEBC, we actually formed a group uh, where our members were mentored by um, Winnie Lichuma, uh, by Winnie Njenga, I can't, be, I can't remember the third lady, but they had one-on-one -on -one sessions with those ladies who gave freely of their time just to mentor our members to go through the interview. So whatever it is, do let us know and we will find help for you. Um, do please have a board ready CV with you at all times. Please don't say, when we ask for CVs, don't send me a CV of you looking for a job, please. Just send me a CV of, not a CV, a profile of you looking for uh, a board position. Um, and many times when um, we are requested for uh, board profiles, sometimes it's a matter of minutes. I mean, you get a call from John Gumi who says, Catherine, can I have uh, in the next five minutes the CV? And so you have to scramble around and uh, get the CV that you have that you can share with him. So it's always good for us to have an updated profile um, so that we can share it whenever we are asked because sometimes there is not enough time for us to come back to you to ask you for your profile. And when we ask, please don't tell us, I'll bring it tomorrow. Sometimes by tomorrow, the position is gone. So we need you to have your profile ready and at all times, if you need to amend it, because it needs to speak to the profile of, uh, of the individual they're looking for, just a small place for you to quickly amend and send to us. So don't tire of us coming back to you and say, can I have your CV? It is because we don't want uh, to send um, every C, uh, I mean the same CV for every role. We want you to tailor make it for specific roles and we'll give you enough information uh, for you to do that. Um, so please participate. We are looking forward to engaging with you, to learning from you, uh, even as you learn from us, to you opening up doors for us, uh, to you opening up doors for the other members of the network, and uh, to you networking with the rest of the members of the network, because together uh, we grow our network. So unless there are questions, I really want to thank you for joining the induction uh, session today. But as I said, our um, feel free to call us anytime. Our, our phone lines are open. Our office is open to you. Uh, feel free to drop us an email and we are happy to respond. So I want to say thank you very, very, very much. And unless there is a question, we can call it 
uh, a day. I can see we are dead on time at 8 p.m. Is there anybody who has a quick question? Rose, yes. <laughs> Thank you, sorry. <laughs> it, it, uh, it's, you. it's not really a question. I just feel like when uh, I, I talked, I was on the road, so I felt like I didn't give it all. I had promised that I would, I would just talk a little bit about my session at um, Women on Boards. And if you could just allow me two minutes, please. Uh, so I joined Women on Boards, I think about four years now. And uh, when I joined, uh, you know, usually at the beginning, you feel aloof, you feel lost because you're, you're standing with giants and you're feeling like an ant. So through the many sessions, then you slowly start opening up and, and start training and offering yourself because we all have special skills wherever we are coming from. We all have talent. So as you're joining, please don't feel inferior. Don't feel like... Um, the, the, the board already has a team who are working and coordinating other thing, things around. If you feel you have anything to offer, please feel free. And that is how I got myself active, by offering myself for any position. And I got myself into the partnership and finance uh, committee. And out of that, I have learned. And now I am serving uh, on a board through appointment, thanks again to women on board. So I've had the opportunity to serve uh, reporting to boards as a, as a role in my senior role, but also as a non-executive director. So right now through women on boards, I'm serving at uh, Yeho Microfinance uh, Services. So it's a microfinance institution, which is also working in terms of empowering women. So, which is really good. And out of that, I've honed my skills in corporate governance. So I'm the chair of the corporate governance committee. And we are also looking at, at um, sustainability. Uh, so we've started another subcommittee called sustain, sustainability and social responsibility. So a lot of learning. So I thought it's just important I share this so that um, we all feel confident that there's something for us to do and an opportunity for us to learn. So let's not sit back and then after a while, I think we have experienced that where some people start saying, oh, I'm not reaping the benefits. But as they always say, when there's an opportunity, grab it. So let's feel confident so that we learn and grab the opportunities, grab the learning sessions also so that we are all growing together and we are here to support one another. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rose very important points, Asante Sana. Let me thank uh, the board members. Let me thank the committee members, Judy, your team, which is in charge of this uh, program. Thank you so much. Uh, the secretariat, as I said, we can't thank you enough and wish everybody uh, a great evening as we look forward to uh, further interactions with you. Thank you so much and God bless always. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.